This week, we're going to decipher the mystery of NumPy axis arguments. What do they mean? What is an axis in NumPy? And how you can use this to do some really powerful operations very quickly. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, I want to talk about the NumPy axis and how you can use that to use some NumPy functions in ways that you probably didn't know about. Now, since to demonstrate this, I need some data to work with, but I don't want anything too large and complicated, I've done something that I do very frequently when I'm learning something about NumPy, which is make some small test arrays. So in this case, I've already typed out two test arrays. I'm gonna go ahead and run these cells. If you want to follow along, you can make your own or pause the video and copy mine. So this first test array, grid temperatures, is supposed to represent a gridded forecast, let's say. And we have our maybe gridded observations. Uh, so I'm trying to emulate four time steps with six stations that are arranged in two rows and three columns. So this would be my first time step. This would be my second time step, third, and fourth. You'll notice that I've made each of these axes, which we'll get to exactly what that means in a second, a different number of elements. So there are four time steps. There are three columns or three stations in each row, and there are two rows per time step. That's a common mistake when you're trying something with NumPy is you make a three by three array or a three by three by three array, and you think you know exactly what's going on, but when you try it on real data, it doesn't work. And that's because your real data does have different numbers of elements in these different directions, and you didn't have your slice or whatever you're trying to do correct. The second, this time series temperatures, is the simpler of the two and the one that we'll start with. This is just supposed to represent three different stations that are observing temperature, let's say every hour. And so we've got six hours. So station one, station two, and station three. So rows are stations, columns are time. Now you notice I've said rows and columns a couple times and I try to avoid that as much as I can because in NumPy, there's no such thing. And when you get to higher dimensions of data, that becomes very clear. So if you have a five dimensional array, you have row, column, depth, maybe time, but then what? So really these dimensions are axes of the array. Think about a graph. You can have a 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D would sort of be an animation. And that's where this analogy starts to break down. But the axes is just an individual part of this NumPy array. It's a direction to go through the array. So let's take a look at our time series temperatures. Remember, I'm using tab completion here. So I'm going to look at the NDIM attribute, which is the number of dimensions. So it's a two-dimensional array. It has rows and columns, if you will. So let's say that I want to get some information about minimum values. So I might be tempted to do something like time series temperatures dot min. And we get 20 back. So 20 is indeed the lowest value in this array, but that's probably not what I want unless I want to know what is the lowest temperature experienced by any station at any time in the data. Maybe I want to know what is the lowest temperature that each station experienced. I'm trying to make a map of lows over the last six hours, let's say. Or maybe I want to know what is the minimum temperature at each time? Where was it the coldest at any given time in those six hours? This is where the axis argument can come in and help us a lot. You don't have to do looping. You don't have to do any manual slicing, but to understand it, let's actually make a couple slices here. So time series temperatures, 
I'm going to make a slice. I'm going to get the zeroth element in the zeroth dimension, or the zeroth axis, and everything in the oneth axis. So axes are zero-based, just like everything else. So that gives me the first row, if you will, in this simple 2D array. Let's look at what happens if we say, give me everything, so that's what the colon is indicating, along the zeroth axis, and give me the zeroth items along the oneth axis. So before I press shift return, take a second and think about what you think this is going to give. Right, so 23, 24, and 25. So that gives us the zeroth column and all rows. So now let's work with time series temperatures again. I'm going to call dot min. And if I look in shift tab, we see that we have an axis argument. An axis defaults to none. So that says give me the minimum value anywhere in the array, but the individual element. Now I'm going to pass axis equals zero. So just from the shape, we should be able to tell something here. So when we had the zeroth thing in the zeroth axis, we had effectively a row. So we had six hours. And here we have that same shape. So this is the minimum temperature of any station at every hour. So if you will, this is the column wise minimum. So 23, 24, 23, 22, and 20. So take a second to think about that. It is using axis zero, which we have said is rows. So it makes all of those go away. It collapses that axis. So we're effectively just left with columns. So it takes the average of that axis. So now let's do time series temperatures dot min axis equals one. So now we're going to collapse the oneth axis, which we said in this simple 2D case was columns. So we're going to collapse what? Yeah, so we're going to just have rows. So we'll have three elements that are the minimum of each row. So this would be what is the minimum temperature that any given station reached. We collapsed axis one, which was represented as columns here. Okay, now let's look at the more complicated case. So I'm going to print out my grid temperatures array again, just so we know what it looks like. Grid temperatures dot indim. So we have three row column depth, if you will, but really just axis zero, axis one, axis two. So now if I type grid temperatures, zero colon colon. So now I'm going to get the zeroth thing in the zeroth axis and everything else. And you see what I get is this first block here. So the zeroth axis is representing the time steps in this case, the outside brackets. So each bracket effectively is an axis. So zeroth, first, and second. So now let's look at that again. Grid temperatures, everything in the zeroth, the zeroth thing in the first, and everything in the second. So what's that going to give us? So everything in the first means we expect there to be four time steps. The zeroth in the next, and then everything. So I expect the first row of each of these different time steps. So 25, 26, 27, 24, 25, 26, 23, 24, 25, and 22, 23, 24. And yes, that's exactly what we get. So one more. And you might say, why bother to think about all this? I can just write a loop or something. This is way, way faster. And part of the powerful thing 
about NumPy. So now we're getting the zeroth thing in the last axis or the oneth axis. So that gives us an array that's got four by two. 25, 26, 24, 25, 25, 26, 24, 25. So this is effectively giving us the first column, if you will, at each time step. But really you could think of it as the innermost dimension, the next to the outermost event dimension, and the outermost dimension. So this time instead of using minimum, I'm gonna take some means. So grid temperatures dot mean. That gives me the mean temperature over all points at all times. Maybe not the most useful. Grid temperatures dot mean axis equals zero. So what do we say that was going to do? That means we're going to collapse the zero with axis, which was the outermost set of brackets, which was our times. So we should get a two row, three column array, which we do. So this is the average grid over all time steps. And as you can see, if your data are arranged differently, then you might have to be using a different axis. So what about axis equals one? What do you think we're gonna get here? So here, we collapse that row number, if you will. So we're getting the mean at all time steps of the columns. Remember, whatever thing we specify here, it goes away. And finally, we'll do axis equals two. So what shape do we expect from this? Well, now we're collapsing the innermost dimension, which we said was represented by columns, if you're still thinking of this in 3D. And then we have two rows, so we expect a row-wise average at each time step, or a four by two array. And that's exactly what we get. So this can be a little confusing to wrap your head around, especially when you get into higher dimensional arrays, five dimensional arrays, or even four dimensional arrays get pretty complicated. So don't be afraid of trying this argument, but do this exercise. Take some small subsets of data, something very simple where you know what the answer should be, and play around with it until you understand what you're doing. That's what all of us that use NumPy regularly end up doing to prove to ourselves that we know what we're doing. NumPy does let you do calculations very fast, but that also means it lets you do incorrect calculations very fast if you don't know how to use the functions. That's one of the great things about notebooks is they let you do small experiments like this to really understand what's happening. So I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.